Hi folks, welcome back to the Horde. So, uh, it's about 4 o'clock. Well, it's later than I thought. It is November 24th, Monday. 17.8 degrees Celsius. A week from today will be December. Wow. It's freaky. Um, so, 64 degrees on this one. This one says 68, sitting in a little warmer spot, so to speak. So, um, they're predicting possibility 68 today, right? In a snowstorm Wednesday night with 5 to 8 inches. So, given that, that means the day before Thanksgiving is going to be a mega zoo. And it was raining this morning, so I figured I'd run out and you know buy the turkey we're gonna cook and um, get some gas and put stabilizer in it just in case I need to run one of the snow blowers or if the storm is really bad and it knocks the power out so I got six gallons of gas waiting for that just in case it happens so when I got home I spent a lot of time on this getting the um, getting it back to uh, condition. Unfortunately, the tarp does have a couple of holes in it, right? You guys could see that one, a little one here. Um, I mean, what's in it isn't of the greatest value. What the tarp, well, actually, you can kind of see any holes that are floating around. I mean, the major reason for having the tarp on it is to keep this plywood bed as dry as possible. So even if a little water does get in there, and, and you know, to keep these things as dry as possible, given that it's up off the ground, obviously, because it's a trailer, and given that it could wind tunnel through here fairly well, I think, I think it'll be okay. Do I know? No. Um, I probably shouldn't be such a cheap prick, and I should probably replace the tarp but I'm probably not getting to that right away. So it is what it is for now. But it did take quite a bit of time to, um, I mean, if the tarp fails, that doesn't mean the hoops are gonna collapse, right? It just means the tarp fails and the hoops have less weight on them. So where I put the time in was on the hoops. So uh, let's hope for the best. Yeah, that took quite a lot of time. Sorry for the wind. The second thing, I put a little time into is this guy so I put a couple of um, two by sixes together and I need to get the height but I need to get this height I need to, I need to get that height so that I can put kind of a uh, dead man on the shed which sets the height of this and this and I need to get it up a little taller right because I want to get rid of these bows on the side um, the plywood keeps getting wet in there which obviously means the tarp is porous I think I have the replacement tarp for this and lastly this guy I have a couple of these uh, plank assemblies that we used when we uh, did the siding on the house. My plan is to take a couple of those apart and get get this thing done up properly and uh, jacked up properly. I'm going to leave this as a 16, as a um, 8x16 or 9x16, whatever it is, because I got a few things like that Kawasaki and quite honestly that little Honda there or even that Honda quad I'd like to get a couple of these other things under some kind of cover um, before the real weather sets in so there's that but I've also been um, doing a certain amount of research like um, Honda three-wheelers use number 50 chain and most of you guys will go yeah no crap Sherlock um, 
but if I'm going to try to graph a Honda engine onto something and I got number 50 chain coming out the sprocket there and I want to hook it to a rear end right I need to put some kind of sprocket on that rear end so I need to know what kind of sprocket to get my hot little hands on you know I keep looking at this guy and I keep going back and forth with it it is the exact width tire to tire width that I need and right it's got the floating right there it's got shocks on it I mean that thing without a huge amount of effort I could probably slam it right into the rear end of that thing then I have forward and reverse and with the Honda 5 speed I'd have forward reverse five gears forward and five gears reverse so but that's the only free floating rear end I have floating around um, to get another one now I gotta start tearing things apart and I've kinda had the hots to turn one of these two guys into a, um, a gas powered utility vehicle um, these rear ends do not have reverse and if I go with a um, uh, six and a half horsepower through a torque converter I still have no reverse um, and having a UTV without reverse you, you know I mean kind of sucks especially if you get yourself in a nose down situation I mean, what do you do put a winch on the back I mean you, you know that's like a, uh, a tank with uh, you, you know huge lights in the back for uh, for retreating from from uh, battle right so I don't know though should I put one of these together it really isn't going to do any all it's going to do is putt around the lawn and perhaps drag a few things. See, for for many of you guys who don't have a horde, there are pluses and there are minuses to having a horde. The, the plus is you have everything in the world at your disposal. Because I not only have a horde, but if I think I need something, typically in a short period of time I can lay my hot little hands on it at a reasonable price right within my my budgets so um, for those of you who get like this and this is what you have and this is all you have right that means you have to make this work you have to take this and whatever else you have and make it work you can't say oh I'm gonna go put a rear end into it and oh maybe I'm gonna put a Honda motor on it with a five-speed or maybe I'm just gonna go torque converter those thoughts aren't grinding through your head chances are you have one golf cart one motor whether it's something with a torque converter or a motorcycle motor you, you know one one plan you could put together you don't have a million different options my problem is my variable for doing things is time how much time is it going to take to do whatever I'm trying to do and given that I've put that time into it what is it going to buy me how is it going to make my life easier what is it going to do for me to uh, to make make things go along a little better so um, anyway my conundrum everybody's got got their own wackiness and that's my wackiness right too many possibilities um, I guess I should wrap up this video I'm just kind of roaming around in circles uh, I'm hoping that thing manages to stay alive for the winter I guess it depends if we get 10 foot of snow like Buffalo then very bad things stop start to happen I mean, I'd start worrying about, you know, roof collapse. 
I've had, last winter I've had over two, two foot, approaching three foot on this place, and it was wet, it rained on it, and it took it, but six foot, that's a different, completely different beast. This thing was uh, put together with engineered trusses, and um, supposedly this thing, this thing will take everything we could throw at it and more. Um, when we when we put it together, we also used uh, hurricane clips on the ends. Um, so it, it really it really shouldn't bow out. There's also um, some diagonals that kind of go from the walls across the trusses um, like that. So it would it would take it would take a lot to bring the garage down, which is wonderful, right? I'll get to move into it when the house collapses under six foot of snow. Um, yeah, I would I would be concerned. Um, I do own a roof rake, but uh, I ain't getting on top. Uh, I I could get the low I could get this this side with the roof rake. I couldn't get way up on top. I guess I'd put out a help call to my buddy Chuck, crazy Chuck, wave some money in front of him and say, hey, you got to get here and you got to get my roof lightened up. This, about taking six foot of snow, uh, I would clear it off. Um, right? It, but believe it or not, I... I think it, I think would probably handle it. I think. Maybe, maybe not. The sheds. How did I build those? Well, chances are with the wind blowing, there wouldn't be a real six foot of snow on any of the sheds. Some of it would come off. That would take it. That shed would. I don't know. That one probably would, the way it's built. I'm not sure about the, uh, well, the Gambrel roof, is what I call, or the uh, quasi-lean-to shed there. They, they may or may not take six foot of snow. We, uh, we don't get that kind of snow in the area. Uh, for Buffalo, they've, uh, they've seen that kind of trouble, not necessarily six foot, but approaching six foot before. For us, we've we've seen nothing like that. Yeah, I think I think the Unabomber shed there would take it. It's pretty pointy, so the snow would wouldn't really stay on there. That that's pretty flat. The uh, car thing is pretty flat. Obviously, the hoop buildings would be screwed. The uh, the back of the truck here would take the weight. I'm not sure if it would move it because if it moves the back of the truck, it could start screwing things up there. I would probably clear that off too. I wouldn't want to keep the snow on it. All right, folks. Thank you for watching and commenting and subscribing. Remember to keep your your feet down, keep your head up. If there's anybody up in Buffalo, I know. I know there's a couple of subscribers up in that area. Um, if there's anybody up there who's really screwed with this weather, sorry about that. Hopefully you're okay. How, or anywhere else the weather is turning ugly on you, right? Nobody needs that kind of trouble. Anyway, folks, thank you for watching and commenting and subscribing. Remember to keep your feet down, keep your head up, and we'll catch up with you tomorrow. Hopefully tomorrow is a little more productive day. Bye now.